Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, your excellencies, friends, it's an honor and a pleasure for me to have the chance to welcome you here this evening on behalf of the Institute for Culture Diplomacy and of course the Embassy of Rwanda. For those of you who have not yet, we've had the chance to meet, uh, my name is Mark Donfried, the director and founder of the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy. And I must say tonight's event is important to us for three reasons, actually. Uh, first of all, uh, given, of course, the wonderful partnership that I'm grateful to have had with the Embassy of Rwanda throughout the years. It's always an honor uh, to partner with the Embassy of Rwanda. We've had really some amazing days here. We did the special Rwanda evening uh, last year, uh, where we had the chance to have also dancers from Rwanda, also Lord Jack McConnell from our advisory board, uh, who actually spoke very, very positively about the tremendous progress uh, that has been witnessed in uh, Rwanda. So first of all, I'd like to give thanks for the, the continued partnership with the embassy. Second of all, uh, of course, the topic of genocide is a topic that's very important for us uh, for two reasons. First of all, you may not know, but the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy has an initiative uh, focused exactly on genocide. Uh, and the initiative is really looking primarily at the issue. You know, 1951, the world actually agreed uh, genocide is a crime. Uh, as we all know, since then, the main problem has been implementation. Uh, even though it's actually an easy issue in the sense everyone agrees, it's an extremely difficult issue in the sense this problem of intervention. For this reason and that reason, we haven't actually been able to prevent it. So the initiative is really looking for also a fast track solution, how we can actually try uh, to assist in this implementation. Uh, the initiative is actually headed by the current Prime Minister of Slovenia, uh, Mr. Janis Janza, who's also the president of our human rights initiatives at ICD. He will be here, for those of you who are Berliners, next Monday, actually, on the 9th of May, uh, for Europe Day. Uh, so you'll have a chance to actually meet the Prime Minister of Slovenia. He'll be speaking also on the issue of human rights. Uh, so in that sense, the issue of genocide as a whole uh, is very important for us, and we see it also important for the cultural diplomacy uh, to really engage in that sense which many of you may know is actually a fairly novel thing in the sense cultural diplomacy of the past used to typically only focus on the easy things, on the positive things. Uh, let's attract others, let's tell others the good things about Germany or the good things about the USA. At the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy, we think that's part of it, uh, but it's just as important to discuss also difficult things, things where maybe we don't agree. And I think there the field of human rights is a very important field to be embraced with cultural diplomacy. The third reason uh, why it's very important for us is I think with Rwanda, we see really a success story uh, that I think the reconciliation process has really been assisted by cultural diplomacy as well as culture. And I think there, luckily, we can point to really some very powerful examples where culture actually assisted in the reconciliation process. South Africa is, of course, a second great example where that was the case. Uh, so I think there also in terms of positive examples, we really see a, a wonderful success story. Even though everything isn't perfect now, I think it's amazing to see how far things have come. And I think their culture and also cultural diplomacy, at least in the indirect sense, was actually very, very important. So for three reasons, it's really an honor and a pleasure for me to welcome you here today. Uh, and uh, yes, I look forward to an evening uh, of reflection uh, and also an evening of learning uh, for all of us. So thank you very much, and I wish you all the, an enlightening evening. Thank you. Mr. Dornfried, thank you very much for the introduction, and thank you very much, of course, the uh, Institute for Cultural Diplomacy to have us here tonight. Um, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. Um, I'm very impressed and thankful to see how many of you are here tonight on an, uh, on an Brückentag between two public holidays and on even a wonderful sunny uh, afternoon, um, the last sunny uh, day of the April 2012. And so thanks for coming uh, to remember a completely different April. Um, a horrible and a most cruel April, the April of uh, 1994, um, and of course the May and June of 1994, 100 days um, of the genocide which killed more than one million people in Rwanda. Especially we here in Germany, uh, we do know how important um, it is not to forget and to remember and to remind ourselves of the past and what, happen, what happened, even if it is very painful for ourselves. So um, in this regard, thank you very much for uh, sacrificing your afternoon and for sacrificing um, your preparations for the uh, Tanzin in Mai uh, in order to remember a uh, horrible thing, uh, to remember the genocide and to discuss how uh, Rwanda twice uh, to deal with the horror in his past. Um, 
I would like to introduce the three women on the, on the panel who are discussing with us tonight. Um, I would like to begin on my, uh, on my left side. Uh, this is uh, Mrs. Esther Muyabayo. Thanks for, thanks for coming here. Um, you were born in 1965 in, um, uh, 1958, sorry, in, uh, in uh, Rwanda four years before Rwanda became independent. Um, you became a teacher, you studied sociology um, in Belgium, and then you returned um, to Rwanda, and you worked as a teacher there, uh, and later on for the organization of Oxfam. Um, during 1994, during the genocide, you were in Rwanda, um, you survived the genocide, um, and after that, we will talk about that a little bit later on. Um, and after the genocide, um, you worked especially as a, as a trauma therapist in, um, in Rwanda, dealing with the, with the victims, the many, many victims in, um, in Rwanda. You founded um, an association called AVEGA, L'Association des Veufs du Genocide d'Avril, the Association of uh, the Widows of the Genocide of April. And, um, since 1999, you live in Germany. You work here as an as an um, as an trauma therapist as well, and you're very often uh, in Rwanda, at least uh, once a year, as you told me before. Yeah? You wrote, um, of course, you wrote two books. I'm, I'm sure most uh, most of the people here know your books. Um, the first one was uh, called in French "Survivante." Um, in Germany, it's uh, "Ein Leben mehr." I don't know how it's called in English. Okay, it's not translated in English, but you can read it in, uh, in German. Um, and the second one is uh, La Fleur de Stéphanie, um, Auf der Suche nach uh, Stéphanie, uh, your sister uh, who died during the genocide. That is uh, another the second very impressive book. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming here and thanks for, for uh, sharing your views uh, with us. Um, to my right side, um, I would like to introduce um, Her Excellency Christine kuliki yinke um, the ambassador uh, of the Republic of Rwanda. You were born uh, in Rwanda as well in 1965, and you, but you studied in, uh, in Germany for a long time. You studied in, in Ludwigshafen and uh, did a diploma in business administration. Uh, you worked for a very long time um, for the Rwandan embassy, first in Mons, then in uh, Berlin. During, uh, the de uh, during the genocide, you were in, um, in Germany. Um, and uh, later on, you uh, you returned to work for the foreign ministry in um, in uh, Kigali and came back. And now, you, since nine, uh, since 2009, you're the ambassador uh, of the Republic of Rwanda. Thank you very much for taking the initiative for this uh, event tonight, and uh, for being here and sh and sharing your views with us. Last but not least, uh, the youngest one on our right side is uh, Charlotte Ndak. Goreva, you were born in um, 1988, and um, your first time that you came to Rwanda was in 1996, two years after the genocide. Um, your, your father comes from Rwanda, your mother is, um, is German, and um, you're focusing very much in your career, uh, after your experiences in Rwanda, um, uh, on the sources for the conflict in Rwanda and the whole region. And you're very much uh, in, engaged in movements aiming to promote uh, the exchange between youth in Rwanda and Germany, and you're also the co-founder of the campaign Your Voice Against Genocide. You can tell us a little bit more about that uh, later on. Uh, at the moment, you live in Berlin, and you're studying international relations here. Um, ladies and gentlemen, in 1994, on the 6th of April, in the evening of the 6th of April, 1994, uh, the plane carrying the president of, of Burundi and President Javier Hermana of uh, Rwanda crashed. It was shot um, when arriving in, uh, in Kigali. Uh, both presidents were killed, and during the same night and in the morning hours of the 7th of April, 1994, um, the genocide in Rwanda, which was planned by the uh, by the incumbent um, uh, by the incumbent government at that time, um, began, and within just 100 days, 
uh, one million people, um, most of them uh, Tutsi and some moderate Hutus, um, died. Um, the genocide lasted until July. It was not ended, all of us know it, uh, not ended by any interference from outside. It was ended um, by the military victory of the, uh, of the then um, RPF, uh, the, the rebel army of the now president, uh, Paul Kagame, um, who um, came uh, to Kigali and who succeeded there. Um, then during July, more than 500,000 um, refugees, most of them Hutu, fleed uh, to the eastern parts of Congo over the border. Uh, among them a lot and many of, um, of the killers during the genocide, les genocidaires. We here in Germany, we in Europe, we got news from all that. We were shocked sitting in front of the, in front of the uh, TVs. Um, we heard about that in many, many uh, impressive and, and shocking books, uh, among them uh, the wonderful uh, book Shake Hands with the Devil from Romeo Dallaire, who was uh, then um, head of the, uh, of the United Nations force in, in Kigali at that time, very helpless. Other books by Pierre Grushevic, or of course your books, um, Esther, and of course by the impressive firm um, Hotel Rwanda. Um, here in Germany, we were very shocked, we felt um, helpless, and we felt very much ashamed about our helplessness and about not doing anything. But uh, we do not want to talk about that tonight, about this very uh, difficult and uh, horrible uh, chapter of, the, of this uh, dark history. Uh, we want to talk about um, uh, the experiences of people um, in Rwanda. Before we, begin with the, before we begin with the discussion, and I will ask you about your experiences during 1994, uh, we will show you a short movie which was made by the uh, National Commission for the Fight Against uh, Genocide in Rwanda. It's about uh, six or seven minutes, and uh, many people from Rwanda, especially young people from Rwanda, are telling you about their experiences and their hopes for the future in Rwanda. Christian Vanez. I Never find Icyakora ntago nigeze ngira amahirwe yo gukurira mu biganza byabo kugeza mu busore bwanjye kubera genocide yabatwaye ndetse n'abavanimwe ntiyabareka Nitwa Mukamurangwa Lorence Timyaka 1954 Ndumva pakazi wa genocide Icyo dukora twebwe n'ukurerwa abana ba bato mu Rwanda rushya kugira ngo zira kwicana kuko twabaye mu gihe kibi kita amazina ubusebanya nyenzi inzoka inopfu nibindi nk'ibyo
muri jenoside yo mu gihe cyo magana 994 bishya abantu benshi bishya mu ryango wanje wose hamwe na papa na mama bamjare byari bihe bikomeye cyane byakababara namaze igihe kinini narahungabanya cyane nitwa ba muri kedwari i jenoside yakora abatutsi abafite imyaka 11 kawe yarabaye ndi mu bitaro by'ikigogora aho nabashije kumenya ko bahutu b'ikigogora ari kwica abatutsi baho hanyuma rero sini yakira abinera ikikomere igikomere cyangwa ikimwaro kubona abahutu bari kwica abatutsi nyuma inarangiye rwose mbaho numva ndi umuntu ufite ikimwaro umva sini yakira aho ntambutse nko muhutu mutoya muri kije ryo bahutu bakuru bakore mu maso yanje computer science. Mu byukuri ubu mfite ikizere cyejo hazaza kuri uyu munsi wa none no bafite imbaraga zo gukomeza ubuzima busanzwe ndetse mfite n'ikizere cyejo heza hazaza nize kaminuza ndayirangiza ubu mfite akazi kigeretse no kuri ibyo ubu ndubatse nifuza kuzaraga abana banje ndetse nabi igihugu muri rusange igihugu kizira factice ishingiye ku mateka mabi hayo nakuriyemo ntabwo numva nta nubwo navuga nyuma ya genocide 1994 byari bibi bikomeye cyane kuri ngewe ari ku ngobo meze neza nyuma y'imyaka 7 ku genocide irangiye nibwo narekeye aho guhonga abantu nkomeza kwibuka ibyabaye ariko kandi ntibimbuza gukora ubu nkomeza akazi kanje neza kuko nta kundi kuntu byagende ufite kizere gikomeye cyuko abatari yakira duhuje ikibazo eh batari namwe kwiyakira kandi nabacitse kwicumo nabo bakaba twakira ni baduhuze n'amateka yabo twakomotseho bityo twese hamwe nk'abantu bakiri batoya tukiyubakira igihugu kizira imihoro kizuye amahoro kizira amacakubiri twitwa dushimirize ufite imyaka 18 n'umva byinshi kwije na site yakorewe abatutsi muri 1994 bifuzaga kumenya kurushaho icyateye ije na site mu Rwanda n'ingaruka zayo kuri societe nyarwanda bityo bikaba byamfasha ndurungano kubaka igihugu kiza n'ejo hazaza heza habanyarwanda harangwa n'amahoro kuri buri munyarwanda wese Je ni twa maka tsimya kama kuri nyitatu navukiye muri Tanzania sinigeze menye impamvu je nsinde yatutsi yabaye ariko nk'umwana w'ubu ngubu numva ari inshingano zanje kurengera basigaye kwigisha batoya kugira ngo bitazogira kuba ukundi mu Rwanda ndetse n'ahandi twabonye byinshi twabaye muri byinshi ariko tugeze kure tugeze kure turubaka igihugu gishya turategurira abana bacu nabuzukuru nabazadukomokaho Um, ladies, you all come from um, Rwanda. You have your own experiences, your own destiny in connection with the, uh, with the genocide. So I would like to start with the probably most uh, difficult and most painful question um, at the beginning. Um, 
if you could just tell us a little bit in a very um, short sentence, if possible, how you personally and your family was affected in 1994, beginning with, uh, with Esther. It will be difficult in one sentence. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'll try. Yeah, as you said, uh, in 94, I was, I was in Rwanda. <coughs> uh, I was married. I was mother of three. Uh, this period, uh, actually, the, the ambassador, she has to insist a lot because I told her, really, today I cannot come. Today is the day, the 30th of April, is the day they killed my husband and everybody else who were with us. So we have managed for nearly one month. We were hiding in the school where he used to be, to be teacher. He was teaching in a gymnasium. Uh, but later we were betrayed. Somebody have said at what time, uh, at 19, um, 19 in the evening was the time we all assembled to, uh, to eat, to have our evening meal. And somebody knew, somebody from our colleagues, from the Hutu colleagues who were back in the houses. We were hiding in the dormitory in the, the internet. So they come at this time and they put all of us sit boys and men in one group, uh, women and children in the other one. Uh, I remember the youngest they took in the group, he was 12. He tried to come to me. He was coming because they were playing all, all the time with the children. He tried to come to me as a child. They told him, you are already a man. He was only 12. So they were all killed that day. OK. <coughs> My parents, the, 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 my, uh, my parents we, were already killed, I think, in the second week uh, after the genocide started. And actually, my father was a very old man, respected. He was an uh, uh, evangelic, uh, like, like a pastor and a teacher, so everybody knew him. So people like they went to, to the churches to hide in the churches. There were many people hiding at my, my parents. Uh, they came to kill them, and they were actually, they discussed can we really kill him also? They were saying no and yes, and they, then somebody telling them, but you know, you know, the, you know the law, you know that they all have to die, you know that they are lying, even if he has been pretending, liking you and helping you. So at my parents' place, they are 47 in the mass grave. And the same at my parents-in-law, they were all killed. Uh, there used to be seven children. My, fa my husband was the first of the family. Uh, they were seven plus uncle plus auntie plus uh, grandchildren. They killed all of them. One sister from my husband is still alive. And of course, many, 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 many parents. Mm. I think, uh, the, uh, of course, the, the, the biggest, the, uh, what affected the most is the, this big loss, the, the, this emptiness. The, they are all killed. They are all gone and you, you stay. I'm lucky my children survived. Uh, they were small, they were six months, three years, and five years, and this is really my, my big hope. They are there, and they are, they are alive, alive. They are fully alive, mm, at least. Many of my friends didn't have the same chance as me. Many friends lost also the children. Mm. Many children are orphans, don't have a mother like my children have me. So the, the, this, um, to find yourself alive, uh, it was not really a, a hope. We were not saying, oh, uh, great, we are alive. I, we used to say we are condemned to live, because this was not a life that you, you wish anybody to stay when they have been all killed. And they have been killed in so atrocious way. So that it, it remains in your mind. It remains in your mind. Uh, I'm, very, I'm very happy to see a such film, but I just m want to say, uh, pay attention, pay attention. Sometimes it, lasts, it stays for longer than, uh, than 17, 18 years, but we have to find a way. How do we work also on the memories? How do we work on the trauma? How do we make possible that those who, are, who survived can be alive, alive? And perhaps later when we, we, we will be talking, what I really more want to insist on, what do we transmit to our children? How do we give them the best of the people they, they, they lost. And this is uh, what I try. At least this is my, uh, how I try to fight with the, 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 the killers. 
what they did, what they think, they, they think they achieved that, they, they have finished that. Even those who are surviving, we are completely, we were completely traumatized. You saw the boy who said only after seven years he could be functioning. So how, how do we turn uh, back the, the last images of my people? I don't want to see that it is only bodies on the road piling on the on the roads or being eaten by the dogs or being in the latrines being in the in the shit i want my people to be buried even if it is symbolical they have to be buried as human being but they have to be named they have to be known and this is what will help the new generation to know how courageous they were they were how beauty beautiful they were how uh, all, all those qualities who were they and this is really we have we, there is a matter of time we have we cannot afford to delay because time is going people are dying we are forgetting and this is uh, this is why i think really it is very important that we we commemorate and we say it and we put it uh, in books we put it in writing yeah more than one sentence <laughs> <laughs> thank you um, I mean, it is a very, very painful personal process um, for yourself. And thank you very much for, uh, for uh, your courageous uh, openness to, to share that um, with us. Um, um, in 12 years later, after the genocide, you, you went to Rwanda and uh, you, you can read, all of you can read that in your, in your second uh, book, uh, La Fleur de Stephanie, when, when you were looking for um, to find out what happened to your uh, to your sister, and which was uh, very defi difficult and very very painful. I really just can recommend that very shocking and difficult, uh, but very very important book. Thank you very much for your for your courage to uh, to tell us about that, Ambassador. Um, you were at that time in Germany. I guess you have to to uh, admit uh, that you were lucky at that time not to be there. But of course you were also personally affected. How did you, did you experience all the, the, the time being thousands of kilometers away? Um, yes, thank you. Um, being far away, I think it wasn't um, easy because we were also helpless. We didn't know what to do. We didn't know what is happening. Um, we were affected. We saw that the world is not helping us, that the world is not helping our people in, in Rwanda, and it was very painful to somehow to be also a kind of um, just to look on it and uh, not be able to do anything for, for anyone and for anybody. Sometimes we wonder if if you can see, you, you also said it, you, you were lucky to be here. I don't know if lucky is the word. Mm. Uh, I don't know exactly which word you, you might use mm. in that case, but it wasn't also uh, an easy situation for, for, for anybody. Of course, compared to the people like Esther and others who were at home, we were, they, they were much, much, much uh, more uh, concerned. And, it was a totally different situation, but it wasn't also an easy situation to, 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 to watch it at the, from, from outside and from so far. Charlotte, um, you were a child when all that uh, happened. How did you experience that at, uh, at the time? And especially, uh, what were your impressions when you first came to Rwanda two years after the genocide in 1996? Um, in 1994, I was six years old, so I was affected indirectly by the genocide, and I lived in Germany with my family. Uh, most of the relatives of my father had left Rwanda by that time, and those that remained were all killed. And um, I was too young at that time to understand what was going on, and we moved uh, to Rwanda in 1996, which was two years after the genocide. And um, my parents had kept me from uh, the stories and what had happened to my father's family. So when I got there, um, I, was, I was happy to go back to Rwanda because my father was happy to go home to his country. Um, but when I came to Rwanda, I realized that um, uh, it was a very difficult situation because um, uh, people um, 
I, I can compare it to now when I go back. Now people are, are friendly and smiling and very open. But at that time, it was very rare to see somebody smiling at you when they didn't know you. And so um, I, I felt that it was a very difficult um, situation and the atmosphere was, was difficult to live in. And also at that time, um, it, it wasn't safe everywhere in Rwanda and uh, we weren't allowed to um, leave Kigali, for instance. And so this is something that, although I didn't understand at age six or eight, um, I, I could feel it. Yeah. Um. Now it's 18 years after, after the genocide, um, meaning that now the first uh, children who have been born after the genocide grow adult now. They, they get uh, 18 years old. Um, also, uh, people who were born because of rapes during, during the genocide, they also become adult right now. Um, if you come to, to Rwanda, now, 18 years later, being a member of the of the young generation, uh, how present is um, is the genocide still in the minds of the people, especially of the young people? Um, I would say it's very present, um, especially during uh, the commemoration period, which is now April. Um, it obviously depends on, on each person, um, how they were affected, if they survived the genocide or if they came later with their parents to Rwanda uh, when they were still kids. But it, it's something that affects every young person in Rwanda. Um, and um, from what I've seen, a lot of people um, actively participate in the process of reconciliation and ask questions and talk about it with their friends. So I, I really feel that the youth has, has an important role to play and they, they do it. Um, do they talk openly about what happened, even if, if they're younger, if uh, born after the genocide? And uh, maybe uh, you can also explain what, what your initiative does in order to, to remind especially young people about what happened. Um, again, I would say it, it really depends uh, on, on the individual, um, how they talk about it. Um, but um, I feel that they ask a lot of questions and it's also uh, the generation that asks their parents uh, where they were or what they did or how they survived. Um, personally, I mean, I, I live abroad and with a uh, and a number of my friends, we created an initiative which is called um, Rwanda Connection, which is um, uh, a youth network of Rwandans and friends of Rwanda. And um, during this month of um, April, we started an, a campaign which is called Your Voice Against Genocide. And we created an online platform where everybody can um, uh, leave a message on our internet uh, website or upload a video or photo and give their voice against genocide. And for us, this was a way to um, raise awareness about what happened in Rwanda and um, give other people and even non-Rwandans the opportunity to um, share their, their feelings or uh, support survivors um, by leaving their um, message and giving their voice against genocide. Okay. It's, it's now uh, your chance to, to tell us uh, the, uh, the internet address of that, okay, of that sorry. website. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, wonderconnection.com, written together, and wonder with a U, so it's the German spelling of Wonder Connection. Okay, so <laughs> thank you very much. Um, Esther, we have talked about a lot of individual traumas, and that is also your daily work. And you know how difficult it is to deal with, with individual traumas and how difficult it is to heal it, if it is possible at all. But apart from the individual traumas, what does a an, um, an, uh, an catastrophe like, like the genocide do uh, to a whole people? Uh, what kind of uh, collective trauma is it? And how, if at all, can a society deal with it? Yeah, uh, when I was telling you about uh, the loss of my people, I wanted to say as next point, the loss of my society. It was not only people who have been killed, 
But really, the, in 94, I remember Rwanda as a, a dead society. I remember, you know, uh, you know the killer, you know the person who came, it was, uh, it was neighbors, it were colleagues, it were, I remember one of my sister-in-law, they were running, running, and then they, they start to be tired, and when they look back, who was running after them, who was chasing them, then she saw Pierre, one of the, the young people, they have been to school together, and she told the other one, she told Cesare, the, the, the one they were running together, she told her, don't run, it is only Pierre, our colleague. The other one told her, don't stop, even if it is Pierre. And this is what happened. My sister-in-law st stopped, and she was killed by Pierre, by the friend who was been uh, to, together to school. And we knew the story because of the one who didn't trust the friend and who continued to run. So when you, after the genocide, you have really, who can I uh, trust anymore? If the, the, the young people I was in, in to school, if I cannot trust them, if the colleagues in, uh, in work, I cannot trust them, if the priests and the nuns, I cannot trust them, even the doctors, we have in the categories of the, the people who are being tried now in Rwanda in different level of, uh, of the just, you have everything, you have everybody. And this is what is happening often. People here, when somebody is accused, they tell, him, they tell you, no, 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 he cannot be a killer. We know him, we went to university together, we were studying together. I, I, eat, I was eating with them. They were my friends too. So this is why it is really terrible that after that, you, you, you live in a such mistrust. You have to rebuild again the mistrust with, to, with, with everyone. And not only the, yeah, the, 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 the trust with the people, but also the values of a country, the values of a society. I used to tell that a lot. Uh, what, what has really struck me after the genocide, how it was very difficult to greet somebody. The, the, the easiest greetings, banal. When you meet somebody in Rwanda, you, you just hug, and the, the, the eldest has to, to make a wish for the youngest. So if there's a young girl in the age of the young here, we will say, Girumugabo, we wish you a husband. But usually those young ladies, they were widows. So you will not say that because you, you will hurt them. Uh, or somebody who can be in the age of ha having children, you wish children, girabana. But I can't say that, I couldn't say that because most of the time you will be wrong. The children have been killed. Or, or the, the children, you will tell them, girasona nyoko, I wish you father and mother. But most of the children, they were orphans. You can't wish mother and father. Oh, when you don't wish father and mother and husband, and <laughs> you wish cows. But the cows were also eaten. So you couldn't say, amashio, amashongori. Or then, the, because of the Christianity, uh, we say, yes, akuzgue, glory to Jesus. But most of the people have been killed in the churches, and they didn't trust anymore. Even, even God, this was really, uh, people were saying that God is gone. He used to, we, we are very chauvinistic, we say that God spent the day away, but the night he has to come home. It's Rwanda, of course. Yeah. But this time, he didn't come back home. So there was not even a way of uh, saying, yes, a kuzgui. So uh, uh, imagine a society which doesn't have even greetings. W w how, how down, down we were. And we have to recover, we have to rebuild all this. And uh, sometimes I'm, I'm really thinking that Rwandan are champions. They, they, they go to, they are very quick even in, in rebuilding the society, in how uh, you, you were asking the young girl, how when you go there, you really have, you can't imagine that this is the society you knew in 94. When you are there, it is safe. You can drive in the night. You can go everywhere as you want. You can, in, people are very, yeah, they are very, very nice, but they used to be very nice. So uh, this is why we really, uh, coming to the, the rebuild of the society, we have to see what made it possible? What made it possible to kill the values, to kill the, 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 the whole foundation of a society in order to rebuild it? It's not because Rwandan were by nature, uh, that they are savages, that they are will, that they are killers. It's not true. You can make it with anyone. You can build a genocide. You can build. You have seen that here in Germany. Now the, the, the whole issue of Rwanda is how, how do we deconstruct the whole thing which has been constructed? And this needs really a lot of, uh, we need time. Sometimes people are very impatient with us, but I think, my goodness, we, 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 have, done, we have done our best. 
So you, you, we, we need time, but we need good leadership. This is why I'm happy with the one we have now. But we, he, we, we have to be also to be aware, to be, to be um, uh, not to be aware, to, uh, not only aware, uh, faire attention. To pay attention, to pay attention and uh, careful, careful, because what has made the genocide possible is that at times when we should have said something or when some, uh, something was needed, there was silence. We didn't denounce or the, it was not denounced in time. So who is there to denounce? Who is saying when the le derive? Mm. What is derive in English? Quand ça commence à dériver. When the wrong way, when we start to take the wrong curve, uh, who said, t -t 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 uh, pay attention, uh, where are the safeguards uh, from the politi uh, political uh, side, from the so uh, society, from the church, from the education system, but from the families themselves, from the, what are we telling our children, and what are they learning in the school, and what are the churches telling us now. So it is a whole, it is not only, it is not one, uh, it, it is um, a whole, and we, I'm really, what I'm really happy uh, about Rwanda is that I'm, I think we are on the good way, and this is important. It is difficult to, to recombine a, um, a society which is divided into, into killers and into victims. Um, Ambassador, whenever we talk about that, uh, that issue, we come to, a, um, to the core question of, of humanity. How could that happen? And um, all of the authors writing about it ask that, for example. Romeo Dallaire asked, uh, are we all human or are there other people more human than other? Um, how can a society and how can a state um, deal with the problem that humanity has been severely injured in your country? And what did uh, uh, Rwanda do after that? This is a very difficult question. Um, I think it's uh, first of all very important to to look back and see what happened, and to to learn from from the history to to try to to analyze what happened and why we came so far. Because um, if you want to build the future without taking in consideration what went wrong in the past. You, can, you cannot be sustainable and you cannot be successful. Esther said it right, the Rwandan society was dead, was totally dead, uh, without values, with a uh, loss of uh, human lives, and all even the infrastructures and everything was totally uh, destroyed. So at that time it was very important first to restore the stability, the security, so that the people at least, so they can go to sleep in the evening and know that on the next morning, no one will come to, to kill them or they will be still alive. That wasn't, so it's, it wasn't an evident at that time. <coughs> um, it might take long if I tell you so much. <laughs> but let, let's say that maybe it was very important. The, the first thing, uh, the, you know all about Hutu and Tutsi. Yeah. This was uh, institutional, institutionalized uh, discrimination. The first, the most important was to, to stop this institutionalization. Uh, for example, to put it in the ID card, to have some, some quota for, for Hutu and Tutsi in schools, in uh, civil servants. Uh, so that th those were the first steps that were done, uh, and I think they were the easiest at the beginning, because the uh, biggest one, the, the deepest one, they take time. They are still ongoing today um, to build institutions, to build a nation, to build an identity, um, to come back to our values, to, to see us as Rwandan, not as Hutu, or as Tutsi, uh, as Rwandan and to agree and to come together to build uh, the future. One of the ladies said that we want to give a good heritage to our children and our grandchildren. 
a better Rwanda, a better without discrimination, where all children have the same rights uh, of, of school to go into school of education, um, health care, and so on. Uh, there were a good number of measures that were uh, taken. We have the, the commission mm -hmm. who also did the film, um, where you would to, to deal with the, the, the history of genocide, to, to document everything, because we can try to, to forget, we can try to live with it, but if we for to forgive, but we are not allowed to forget what happened. If we forget, will be the, the, this, this might be the biggest mistake we can do because it will make it happen again. So CNLG, one of the um, um, duty they have is to document the, this, this bad history, to keep it so that our children, they should know that that happened, but not be uh, a, a bad uh, heritage for them and not allowing them uh, to go forward. Um, May I interrupt you at that, uh, at that point? I would like to come back to, to the question of, um, of Hutu and Tutsi. Most people here think that that is the core of, of the whole conflict uh, and uh, of the question. Um, we've talked about that, uh, about that issue in our uh, conversation before, um, before that evening here, that uh, many people do not know um, especially uh, also many Africans do not know um, that uh, the division between Hutu and Tutsi is not an ethnic question, it's not an ethnic division as it may, might be um, maybe the case in, in other African countries where there have been ethnical um, divisions. As you said, it, it was an uh, instrumentalized uh, discrimination and, um, and your, your, your government especially tried to, to overcome that by a concept of, of unity, a concept of, uh, of a united Rwanda. Maybe you could elaborate a little bit more about that, um, how you try to, to form that unity after that division had been instrumentalized for, for, for many, many years. Um, we, we have, uh, let's say that the question of Hutu and Tutsi is, uh, is an artificial one, I would say. But this made it also very difficult to understand that we came to a genocide by such artificial uh, differences. If you, meet, if you meet one Rwandan today, you cannot say 100% is Hutu or Tutsi. It's very difficult to say. The only thing you, you can, the only, um, um, difference you say you see tall or small uh, the form of the noise or something like that but we speak the same language uh, same culture same dances same religion no uh, geogra geographical differentiation uh, we marry each other so that it ca it's not an ethnic but it's very difficult then to understand how uh, people can kill each other with if there is no other difference only on, on physical um, uh, characteristics. So to, 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 to allow the people to understand it is first to show them that they, are, they have much more similarities than differences. If we, have, we share the, the culture, the religion, we share everything, we have everything to be one nation. Uh, in difference, in, uh, you also said it, uh, in other African countries, you'll find really differences in between some, some group or some ethnics. You don't have any differences. So to, to tell the people, first of all, we are all Rwandans, this is our identity. If you feel Hutu or Tutsi, fine. But it's not a reason to discriminate the others. It's not a reason to feel that you, are, uh, you must have some um, favor, favors that others are not having or to, to make any difference. So this is the, the most important message. We are all Rwandan. We, are, we all want to live in a safe Rwanda, to have a bright future for us and for our children. Um, we have, uh, um, for example, a uh, um, commission for unity and reconciliation. They are doing uh, a lot of work, uh, working with, with all <coughs> kinds of groups 
um, that were affected by genocide, you have the uh, the victims, you have the, the the survivors, you have the the widows, you have the um, the raped who are who who gave birth to children from uh, the the. Um, perpetrators or killers of their families. You have different groups to try to reach them, to, to understand them and, and to discuss this with them and uh, to, to bring them all in, a, in a manner together so that they can live um, freely, uh, yes, they can live in freedom uh, with each other. Mm -hmm. The most important thing uh, that has been done is uh, the gachacha. I would like to come back to that a little bit later to the Gachacha court. Uh, I do have, yeah. It's on. It's on. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Or take this one. Now, uh, what Christine and the ambassador is saying, which is very important, when, when people uh, many people are arguing and saying, but the, what they are saying is only politics. And I say, my goodness, if I was lucky and I have had those politics in my childhood, it should have been good. In, during the school time, in the, the period before the genocide, we used to be called, uh, hands up, uh, get up, the Tutsi, and everybody laughed. Uh, uh, then Hutus, get up. And so you, you grow up knowing that being Tutsi is something they laugh off. And now we are lucky they are telling every child is Rwandese. I, I wish I have heard that. Second, for the moment there is now, uh, there is a process going on against one professor. He, he was a doctor in history, teaching in university. What he said, he made a speech. Because the history, what we're learning in school, what was wrote, uh, written in the books, is that Tutsis are foreigners. They came from Ethiopia. And he made once a speech saying that they have to be sent back home by the shortest way. The shortest, shortest way being the Nile, the Nile River. Because the Nile River has its source in Rwanda, in the, the Nyabarongo River. So it was official. A professor is saying such speech. And you, you, you can imagine. So if now we are lucky, it's a matter of the governance. If the governance is using that and openly, it was not hidden at all. The plus the ID card, which was official. We were all having that with us. And it was even the, what they used to, 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 to kill during the genocide. You show your papers, they kill. Now, I agree that when people say, you cannot say that we are all Rwandese, of course we know that we are Tutsi, we are Hutu. This is not the issue. The issue is not being Tutsi or Hutu. The issue is how it is used for which purpose it is used. If now you look, uh, but I'm repeating what you have said, it is such a stereotype. If you look at the people, you will not know if he's Tutsi or Hutu because he's tall, but you have tall Hutu and you have Tutsi who are small, but he will get his exam and he will get his job. And this is what we want. I do have one specific question um, to the ambassador. Um, if you focus uh, on the unity of all who these people, and uh, saying that uh, the division between um, uh, Hutu and Tutsi was artificial, and that it led into the catastrophe. Um, why could you could you explain why um, Rwanda is um, putting much emphasis on um, naming the genocide a genocide against the Tutsis, not a genocide that happened against Rwandans at that time? Um, if you could explain that, just why that. The point is first the the, the definition of genocide. The genocide is a uh, um, planned and um, how do you call it? Um, a planned you have action the intention, against a certain group of people. The intention is to 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 kill and then to uh, um, exterminate a, a group of people or part of the group. Um, and that time in Rwanda, it was what was what has been said, what has been prepared against Tutsi. You cannot say that it was a genocide, but not precise against who it was. It was it is clear it was against Tutsi. Um, as Esther said, it there are also Hutu and Tutsis, but th this is not the question. 
what we say today, it's, you can feel Hutu and you can say you are Hutu and you are Tutsi, but what do you do uh, 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 with it? What, what does it mean when you say I'm Hutu and I'm Tutsi? So the, the, we say it's a genocide, it was clear, it was against uh, Tutsi. There were Hutu who were killed, but they were killed because they, 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 they helped Tutsi, they were killed uh, for other reasons, but it wasn't a planned killing of Hutu. It was a planned killing of Tutsi with the, uh, the, the, the objective to kill them all, to send them back, as she said, <coughs> where they came from, to Ethiopia. And they, they even said the, the, the babies that they were, the, the women were carrying in, the, in their, um, how do you call it, the, their yeah. pregnancy. They are also Tutsi. They, they, they were also killed for, for that reason, even for m small children, meaning that the, the aim was really to exterminate all of them. That's why it's a genocide against Tutsi. I know that there is a big, uh, there are some, some criticism, yes, but it was against Rwandans and so on. It was against Tutsi at that time. It's precisely Tutsi. OK, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> Charlotte, how, uh, in, in, in your generation, how present is the division between Hutu and Tutsi still? It's a very difficult question to I answer. Um, from my personal experience, I mean, um, I, when I went to school in Rwanda from 1996, I must say that as a child, um, it never mattered to me or to my friends because what mattered is um, if it was my friend, if he liked to play with me or if he invited me to his birthday party. And it didn't uh, matter in school. And it also, even now when I go back to Wanda, I don't feel that it really matters um, in, public, uh, in public life. It doesn't matter who your shopkeeper is or because life has, goes on and people, um, people call the, the, themselves Wandans. They identify as Wandans. And um, of course, it is still something that is present because it has divided society for a long time. And um, um, different people, um, I would say different people uh, um, react differently to it because um, I, I know people who are um, mixed Hutu Tutsi and for them it really doesn't matter what ethnicity their neighbor is. But of course, you have survivors who still feel that it's difficult to completely forget uh, uh, your, your ethnic background. So I would really say that um, it's still present, but for the young people, because even f uh, especially the generation after 1994, it has less importance. Um, it's, it's still important for the parents or the older relatives, but for the young people, it's becoming less important. Although, I mean, it's still there and mm. it still plays a role. Yes. But I think the ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, shortly. Yes, if I may. Uh, maybe I would uh, add that the, the parents, they play a very crucial role in what mm. they are teaching their children. Of course, it's very difficult when, when a child asks, why don't I have a grandmother and why don't I have a, gra uh, a grandfather without uncles and, and uh, aunties. But it's, it's, it's up on, on uh, us as adults what we explain them. Yes, they were killed, but it was wrong. What was done was wrong and not tell them uh, a bad stories or give them this, this division again to, be, to say it was bad but you are all random today. Sometimes of course it's difficult. It's a, it's a very uh, difficult mm -hmm. situation also for the parents. But I think that the children will also take what they, they hear from the parents but at a certain point uh, the, the experience also we have is that the, the, the when they became 18 or 20 they, they also start to to question what the, the parents told them. And this is also very important uh, to, to give them the opportunity to have a, a, another a vi a version of, of, the, of the facts, to, to see it from, from another side, and maybe to, to, have, uh, to, to build a, a personal opinion. Mm. It, it's, it's good news to, uh, to hear that, it in, at least in day-to-day in -day life, in daily life, that it doesn't play 
such a big role anymore, uh, this division. But as we've seen here with, with individual traumas before, you said when, when you watch the movie, everything can come back, can come up again, even 18 um, years later. Um, is it the same case with a, with, a, with a collective trauma, that everything can come up again? Uh, I think we, 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 we really have to, to be careful in Rwanda. In the same time, we want to, to, to build a new Rwanda, uh, knowing that we are all Rwandans before. But on the other hand, a genocide happened 18 years ago against the Tutsi. So we have to avoid also, we cannot put a carpet above that and go ahead because it will, it will boil, it will come. So how can, we, how can we allow things to come up, things to come out, but in a contained, in a secure room? Uh, talking of, uh, of, uh, of therapy, I remember one young girl, she came to me, she was, uh, she was 14 when everybody was killed, she was raped. And uh, luckily, one auntie came from Burundi and took her at home and put her in school. And she was in a good Catholic school and a nut, but she couldn't make it. And she was really having very bad notes. And the, the, the auntie was, not one, uh, was wondering what is going wrong. And she, 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 brought, she brought her uh, to me. Uh, and I was really lucky that she could speak in the end. She, she told me uh, later, later when we have a good relationship and she, she, she started telling me, she told me the whole story. She, she told me, you know, in school, she can't look uh, in front, she can't look at the teacher because the teacher, uh, the, the, the male, who too, she see the rapist. And for, for her, they are all the same. So in her trauma, they are all the same. So she doesn't look at the teacher. But she, she can't look at the window because through the window she saw the bushes, the, the gardens of the school. And all the bushes are the same, like the, the bushes where she has been raped. So she cannot look in front, she cannot look uh, uh, aside, so she will, she will just look, uh, look at, her, at, at her feet. And teachers were saying that she's not concentrated or she's impolite or she's this. And uh, yeah, as I said, she was in a Catholic school and uh, the mass every, every, every day and uh, forgive, 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 they say it all the time. And she was really mad, she couldn't forgive. She, I remember in, the, in one, uh, one uh, seance, in one uh, setting, in one session, she was really, she cried, she cried and she said, I hate them, I hate them, I hate them and she wanted to kill them. And it was really, really good for a therapeutic thing. Because once she has been able to, to verbalize it, to say, I hate them, I hate them, you can't love your rapist. It will take long. But first of all, she, has, she, she needed to hate them and to, to say it, rather than hating herself and having all the, the stomachache she was having uh, without finishing. And once she has done that, once she has been able to say that, slowly, slowly, she has recovered. Slowly, she will recover. Uh, later on, there were problems of getting pregnant because they, she has been so destroyed. Then later on, uh, God said, Dank, she has the treatment, the appropriate treatment, and she was capable of having babies. So now, she can see something positive. But I wanted to say, it takes time. It takes steps, in, in, in different steps. Mm. So I think, uh, of course, we cannot say, uh, no, how can I put it? This hate, I hate, I hate, I hate, it must be allowed to be said because you cannot be, we are not Jesus Christ, to love our enemies. And it will take time before you have said it and after you have, uh, you, you have been able to make your life, after you have been able to have children yourself to, to uh, where you can give your love, then slowly, slowly now she can be stable and she can... Um, what uh, the, the ambassador is saying is very, very important. What are we telling our children? I think it is very important that we tell the truth to the children and we try to explain to them. Uh, I, I, I have always told my children, when they ask why their father, they, they, everybody has been killed because they were Tutsis. And why do the Tutsi have to die? Why do the Tutsi have to be killed? Then fa uh, started the, the most difficult, this, this uh, very, very complex, it is a very complex question because it is not so easy in Rwanda especially. Because we have, in the family, 
you have some of your cousin, the children of your, your auntie, they are Hutu, you are Tutsi, but you are all cousin, eh? and you love each other. So we have to explain all those things. We have to be clear with the children, but we also have to, yeah, to tell them now it is up to you to make the, to, to, to make the, the, the future. And we hope that it will not repeat. If, if you look to, to the whole um, society, we talk about um, the need for reconciliation. Um, probably no one uh, knows it better than, uh, than the ambassador of South Africa. Welcome here. Uh, how important truth is for, for reconciliation. And, and, but if you look to, to one where if you read interviews with, uh, with, the, with the killers, uh, they uh, always speak about um, forgiveness. Mm -hmm. and, and the victims are speaking about guilt. Mm -hmm. um, what is more important for the reconciliation? Do we have to talk more about the guilt? Before Excuse we me. come to before I came to your, yeah. your to your question, I wanted to add something. We have to be very very uh, careful that we don't make like Rwanda is who to kill us to see uh, victims. This is not true, and this is the easiest way. And people like the easy thing. And when you start to say that it is complex and you have to explain, and they say, no, 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 show me the killers and show me the victims and it will be okay. Yeah. And this is not, excuse me, and this is very, very important because if you look at how we survived, who gave me water, who have hid me, who hide me, who to, uh, do, did die because they wanted to protect uh, Tutsis, okay. So I was not talking about uh, who to uh, killers and, and, and no 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 I I wanted to add neighbors it. the mm. neighbors that are killers and the neighbors that are yeah uh, no no I wanted killers. only to uh, to add this element of complexity yeah. that it is not so so easy white and uh, white and black killers and victims and all those aspects we have to really to to develop them and to try to explain. Uh, now but asking me about uh, reconciliation. How important is the, is the notion of guilt for reconciliation? How, is it more important to speak about the guilt um, before we can come to reconciliation? Or, uh, first of all, I will, not, I, I will not agree with the ambassador. I never use the word reconciliation. Rwanda is using it a lot. <laughs> and I always say what I'm asking you, make, uh, make sure that I live free in this country and nobody's going to kill me again. Now that I'm, I love or not love, I reconcile or not reconcile, is not really my, mm. <laughs> my worry. But of course, I'm not, in a I'm not in charge of a country. The politicians who are in charge of a country have to look to have an overall view, which I'm not uh, doing. But what I think, or when I talk about reconciliation, it's very, very important for me to reconcile with me as a human being, to reconcile with the other human being. What I'm saying, like this, uh, this, uh, the, the whole steps to, to, to have trust again, it is so important that I can trust again a teacher, that I can trust again a priest, if not, I'm, I'm not going to the church, that I can trust again a mother, that I can trust again. I have to reconcile with the, the, the beauty of my country. I, I, I know sometimes it is so hard to see Rwanda so beautiful I remember I used to have a lot of such uh, problems with flowers because flowers were flowering, flowering, and my people were dead. And I wanted everything to stop, and everything didn't stop. The beauty continued. So it took me long to reconcile with the beauty of this, uh, of this country because this is my country. It took me time to, to like it again. I, I, I'm telling you stupid things with reconciliation. I have to reconcile with French. I stopped speaking French after the genocide because the French... Uh, politicians were involved. So things like that, with what you have to reconcile in order to live, uh, to con vita, to continue to, yeah. But about the reconciliation of a nation, this I leave it to mm. the politicians. <laughs> and, and I'll hand it over to you, because it's, uh, it's the task and the responsibility of a, of a government to, to deal uh, with the guilt of those who are guilty. Um, what was the, the one and way to, to do it? Uh, I think uh, Esther is a very good example now to, uh, to show how difficult it is uh, to, to, to lead such a country. Uh, because she's not the only one with this uh, position. But the point is, uh, when we talk about reconciliation, uh, we don't want all to love each other and so on. But to, to be able to live in peace, 
to be able to, 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 to know and in internalize the, the rule of law to say, uh, even though they, they killed my parents, I'm not allowed to kill them. Even though they, they did uh, this and that, I'm not allowed uh, to, to revenge myself. So to, to explain this to, to the people, to our people, and to explain them that, uh, or to bring them so far that they can live um, on a daily basis, to see the, the, the now it's 18 years uh, after the, the genocide, um, most of the perpetrators who are in, in prison, they are coming back home on the hills, they are finding them, the, the people there, uh, so to, to, to find a way to, to, to reconcile them, uh, to be able to live together, but not necessarily to be in love with each other, but to, to live uh, f uh, in, in peace uh, with each other. But also to, to institutionalize some, uh, some rules that also allows the people to live together, to have the same rights, to have the same uh, obligations, not only rights, but also the same obligations. Um, for example, a very important point is, is education. We came so far because our people was not educated enough. They were not able to, to build their own opinion. They, they just uh, thought what the, the Bogomaisa is saying is, is the rule, we have to do it. But w with people that are more educated, uh, that they know their rights, they know that they have to respect the rights of the others. Uh, you want, we will also uh, build a society where it's uh, easier or it's more difficult to, to go to, to a genocide. So it's, it's a very, the point is uh, also when we talk about the reconciliation, it's a very personal um, decision and a very personal experience. There are some who will, um, there are even some who say, okay, I forgive and, and it's done. But there are some, and, and it's also understandable, who will say, I'll, I can never forget and I can never uh, forgi forgive. So we have to live with that. But as, as, a polit as politicians, to, to have a framework where we are sure that the people, they can live in peace together. Um, within the uh, responsibility of the state and of the uh, politicians, um, and you have tools like education, you mentioned it, and you have another tool that is, um, that is justice. And, uh, and the justice has to deal with the guilt because there are people that are guilty. Um, and uh, you mentioned it already, now it's the time to mention it again, the Gachacha <laughs> courts and so mm -hmm. on. Uh, Wanda invented different new tools um, to come to terms with that. Um, looking back now, uh, how effective were the tools, in your opinion? Uh, I will correct you, we didn't invent it. It was there. It is the values where we are talking about homegrown solutions. Uh, the Gachacha is uh, uh, a traditional jurisdiction where the people, Gachacha means um, grass, where the people, they, they meet on, on, on the hill and then discuss any disputes uh, in, the, in the community. Uh, after the genocide, we had uh, more than 120,000 prisoners um, and the, um, the specialists, they, they said that uh, to trial all those people will need more than 100 years in these, in the, in these um, courts that you, you know here, in these uh, former courts. So we went back in our tradition and we, sh we looked for uh, a solution to, to trial uh, these cases, and we came back to Gachacha. Um, the community, they, they, they elect um, seven uh, people of um, trust in their community, because the, the, the genocide was made in the community on the hills. They sit together, and then uh, they, 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 they trial the people. The, the most, there, there are two messages then uh, that uh, has to be done uh, or given. The first one is um, to, to, to stop the, the mentality of impunity. In Rwanda, earlier when we were killing a Tutsi, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a punishable. It was, um, how do you say it in, in, in English, a cavalier's delict. 
It was um, a, a reason. A minor to be, crime. Yes, it's a minor crime to, to kill a Tutsi. To, there were no one who were brought to prison or to court for have killi having killing a Tutsi. To, to stop the, this mentality, to, to stop the, these, uh, this thinking of I can kill somebody and keep living without any, any problem. But on the other hand, it was also an opportunity to, to reconcile or to bring the people together. Because the perpetrators, they met the, on, on the hill within the community. It was a very difficult exercise. You can imagine that there were uh, tension in, in such um, a session where, where mm, the perpetrators are there, are uh, asked questions, uh, telling exactly what they did and how they did it, and the survivors are there. It was also very emotional, but it was necessary. Um, for, for some of the, um, for the perpetrators, they have the opportunity and the chance to, to say that they are guilty and to ask for pardon. And for the, um, for the survivors or the victims, they, they heard the, the history of their own, what happened, and in sometimes also they, they knew where uh, their uh, bodies are and they could bury them uh, in dignity. And this is, these were very important steps also in the, in the reconciliation process, in the, in, in the, the way forward. Meaning that the, the solution we find is, is not, it's not only a question of, of, uh, um, of trying, but also bringing the people together because they are, I would say they are condemned to stay and live together. They cannot go uh, somewhere else for live. They are condemned to live together. So they must have found a, solu uh, a way to, to, to meet again where all the communities there uh, and to ask the, 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 the perpetrators, please uh, ask for pardon, as we did in the past, and to tell the, uh, the victims as far as it was possible, forgive and try to live uh, in, in peace together. Okay. Um, before I open the discussion to the, uh, to the audience, also I would like to ask a last question um, uh, to Charlotte. As a, as a student, um, knowing, knowing both societies, uh, uh, Germany and, um, and Rwanda as well, and, um, and as someone who is in, engaged in the civil society in order to come to terms with uh, the whole uh, problem and engaged in the uh, process, um, how do you think, uh, or how do you, do you judge the, the efforts uh, of Rwandan society and of the Rwandan state, in your personal uh, opinion, to, to come to terms with, uh, with the problem. I'm not saying the process of reconciliation, uh, um, but uh, the dealing with the, with the past. Um, I think Rwanda has done a great job um, since 1994, because uh, 1994 Rwanda was basically a failed state. There was nothing. And when you look at Rwanda today, it has done uh, a lot of efforts at um, economic development um, and in other areas such as help and education. Um, also in terms of reconciliation, as the ambassador mentioned, uh, there have been a lot of efforts and the government has implemented the Gachacha courts to deal with the consequences of the genocide. Um, and I mean, when I compare it with German history and because Germany also had the Holocaust and um, I mean, we must not forget that some issues in Germany only came up much, much later. Um, questions of uh, children asking their parents what happened, or open, uh, talking openly about your role, or the role of your parents, your friends. So, um, I mean, Rwanda still has challenges, obviously, but um, compared to other genocides and uh, to, to where Rwanda has gotten so far, um, it's, I mean, it's a success story, no doubt. So this is my personal <laughs> opinion. Uh, open the, the floor to, uh, to the audience. If any one of you um, has questions, please, please ask them. Um, Sie können die Fragen auch auf, uh, auf, auf Deutsch stellen. Das ist kein Problem. Die Antworten werden auf, uh, auf Englisch kommen. And uh, please, uh, if you ask a question, please give us a name. And uh, if I may ask you, 
to ask a question, not only to give a um, uh, comment. Thank you. Uh, I will collect three questions and then we come back to the panel. Um, Sabine Grund, I want to ask about the political context. I understand that when you've been involved in an event as horrific as this, you want to talk about your personal emotional feelings, but you've talked about the, the topic as if these three months were everything. What about the preceding events? What about the preceding four years? Um, the whole history that goes further back. Um, when we talk about European politics, we talk about across borders, we talk about leading politicians in different countries. This was just as if this was a local event. Any more questions for the moment? I'd like to thank you for your presentation. There's been a lot of talk about who's responsible. And of course, the person with the knife in his hand or the hammer, the gun, the machete, they're directly responsible. I'm from America, I'm from Detroit. When I saw the events unfolding on television, something in me said that, well, somebody will come to the aid of these people. Somebody or something. And as we know, in the current age, there have been a lot of wars that have been conducted for a lot of different things. There are many wars going on, in fact, right now. But what surprised me as this tragedy continued day after day after day, 20,000, 30, 40, 50, 100, 300, a half a million, one million, we get to one million people dead. And those countries, which perhaps had the resources, had neither the interest or the desire to step in and stop that genocide, whatever it may have taken. Now, to me, in any court of law, once a crime has been committed, people are duty bound to address that crime who are the onlookers. They're just as culpable as the person with the knife or the machete or the stick. I have heard very little discussion. Hopefully my comment and my question will at least go to that aim. I've heard very little discussion about those people who are culpable for this event, who let it happen, and they themselves have not been brought to justice. Now, the question is, why don't we have this discussion? And if this, this discussion is needed, then who's culpable? I'm talking about from the streets of Rwanda to the White House. Do we have a, a, a third question? Otherwise, I would ask the ambassador to, to answer first. Thank you. Uh, the question was uh, asked about the, or oh, that run with the genocide, we, we took the genocide as a local uh, event. Uh, I think in, in the, the time we have, one and a half hour and so on, we cannot deal with the uh, uh, whole facets of the genocide. Of course, it wasn't a, a, a national or local event. Um, we had um, three million people who fled Rwanda and went to the neighboring countries, um, Tanzania, um, Burundi, and um, yeah, uh, uh, Zaire at that time, Congo today. The consequences, we are still facing them today in some countries. But the Rwanda cannot solve the questions or the problems in the other areas. We are talking about Rwanda today, how we deal with our, our uh, problems. But one thing is sure is that we need stability and peace in the region. And Rwanda, Rwanda is peace, uh, playing a key role in the stability and peace um, efforts in the region. We are having um, common uh, activities, we are having exchanges, 
uh, to make sure that the, the, the stability in the region is, uh, is given, because we all need stability. Uh, if you have some problems in, in, in Burundi or, or in, in um, Uganda, they'll be, uh, in a way or another, affecting Rwanda. That's why we need also uh, uh, stability in the region. But you are, you, you are right, it was not only a local uh, problem, it also uh, affected our neighboring countries in, in other <coughs> and in different ways, but it did. Want to add to that yeah. one? For the, for the you, it's just sorry, she wanted to add to, to that specific question after that. You, can. you asked about the four years preceding. There was a war in Rwanda. I was working with Oxfam. We were working in a humanitarian. We were intervening for the displaced people. There was a lot. But I want to just to let people know that there is a big difference between a war and a genocide. And if we have talked now about the commemoration of the genocide, and we didn't talk about the whole history of Rwanda, it's because there is a big difference. During the four years of the war, the, ball, uh, the, the bullet were not choosing anybody. The bullet cannot know who is Hutu, who is Tutsi. If you are in the area, there's a lot of chances that you will be affected. I'm not saying that those who are affected by war, that the displaced people or that the refugees are not to be taken in account. They have to be. And it was not enough, perhaps, what has been done. But I just wish to, rem to say, to remind you that when they went to find my mom in the bed, it's not that I'm, I'm happy to be emotional or to bring my emotions here. I'm just putting things as they are. They went to see her in her bed because she was a Tutsi. There was no war in the region when they took my mom. They took the Tutsis everywhere in Rwanda. Where the two armies have been fighting, it was in the north, the affected region. In that region, they have a lot of misery. If you know, you know, if you know Rwanda, you, you remember all the displaced people who were coming to the door of Chigali. This was terrible. This was a war. This was not looking at the precise person. person. When you come to a situation where you want somebody because he's that person, because he's born like that, it is terrifying. And if uh, in, in our world, if it is happening, after what has been said here after the Holocaust, but never again, it happened again. And it's terrifying that there was no intervention for that. So I'm really sorry to say that we, we took this uh, three months as a local event and I feel a bit insulted. If it was not your purpose, it's okay. But I just wanted to say that there is a big difference between dying because of how you are born or dying because there is a war, or because there is something happening to everyone, but not going to look to the baby in the, in the, in the stomach of her mom. A short answer to, to the second question of the international responsibility. It's a little bit difficult. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know exactly what to say, but it's uh, the, inter the international uh, community. Uh, sometimes I wonder what does it mean exactly. Um, failed. It's, it's it's not a question. It's it's clear they they failed. Uh, but uh, the, the problem is um, we always say never again. But it happened again, and it's happening again. Um, I don't have any, uh, how do you call it, uh, a solution for that. But it's very important that, that everybody uh, realize that it's, it's a duty of everybody if their people are, are, building, are being killed uh, in, in Rwanda, in uh, Darfur, or, or Syria, or somewhere else that we all have the duty to, to, or that we are also capable somehow when you only look on it and, and, don't, and don't do anything to, uh, to stop it. Uh, but the point, the next point is what we did we learn uh, from that? For example, in the, in the case of Rwanda, we, have, we, have, we still have a genocidaire living uh, in, in, in the Western countries, living 
without any problems. Um, we have two. We have a case here in in Germany when where, where they they are being trialed now, but there are a good numbers of them who are still uh, free. Um, the countries are aware that they are um, um, how do you call that, that they are wanted, and they are also have cases in Rwanda, but. Um, we ask us, what did we learn then from the Rwandan history if we don't, if we failed to act that time, but what do we do today? Do, it's not only uh, simple to say, oh, we were guilty and we didn't react. Uh, when we have, you, you'll see everywhere when you look at Syria, they say, oh, we don't want the Rwanda again. In Libya, we don't want the Rwanda again. But sometimes we have uh, the feeling that it's only said, but the, the, the actions that they are taken uh, are not so convincing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I mean, of course, there are people uh, outside of Rwanda, in, in Paris, in New York, in, in Washington, who, are, or who were respo responsible for what happened and who were responsible for not stopping it. Um, and of course, we're talking about guilt uh, in, uh, in that regard as well. Um, but that would have been an issue for a complete uh, uh, discussion of itself, uh, a very long one and very controversial one. Um, here we were trying to, um, to, to deal with the issue of how a society deals internally with the problems uh, coming up from an event like the genocide. Um, we had Different questions, uh, more from the lady over there. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Um, basically, what I wanted to ask was um, a very um, particular question, like specifically about that international responsibility, like which countries were exactly those that were voting against the intervention in Rwanda. So I don't know who perhaps here has the knowledge of like which countries exactly they were, because we all know that if in the UN supposedly there is a proposal, there are only a few countries that can decide and vote yes or no. And if there's at least one country from those countries that have the right to vote and say exactly what's going to happen, then if at least one country says no, then nothing's going to happen. And to my knowledge, I, I don't actually know, but I think I have a f um, I think that it was two countries that went against the intervention. And I think it wasn't the US, actually. That is... Um a very difficult <laughs> question, especially for uh, for diplomats. Um, <laughs> it's very contro controversial still. <laughs> um, I just would recommend you uh, uh, one of the greatest books to, to understand a little bit more about the international uh, involvement or not involvement into the problem really is the, uh, the heartbreaking book of uh, Romeo Dallaire, uh, who was then head of the UN in um, 1994 in Rwanda. A handshakes with the devil. It is really a must read on that. And uh, it is really um, shocking. From Linda. Linda ah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah there, there, there are a lot, of, a lot of works about that. It's a uh, question of, of international guilt on um, that. But that is a very difficult issue. Um, I would like to collect some more questions before we come back here to the panel. I've seen one over there. Yes, uh, my, my English is very bad, I think. It's not uh, enough also, good. I can German. Yes, of yes. course. I bin, uh, Muke, my name is Mukenge Shai. I've been out of Congo, in Malika Zahir, or the Belgische Congo. Ich bin äh, zur Kolonialzeit zur Welt gekommen und zu dieser Zeit hatten wir nicht nur eine Zentralbank äh, vom Kongo, äh, belgische Kongo, Ruanda und Burundi zusammen. Wir haben zusammengelebt. 
die Leute aus Kongo, die haben in der Verwaltung in Ruanda, in Burundi gearbeitet. Die Leute von Burundi und Ruanda, die haben bei uns in Katanga, in Minen gearbeitet, in Gasai, die haben in der Verwaltung gearbeitet und so weiter. Nach der Unabhängigkeit war ich in Kinshasa. Ich habe sehr viele Studierenden aus Ruanda und Burundi in Kinshasa gesehen. Die waren meine ältere Brüder. Ich habe mit ihm die, äh, in der Stadt äh, ein bisschen äh, Spaziergänge gemacht. Ich habe ihnen die Stadt gezeigt und ich fühlte mich geehrt, mit äh, meinen großen Brüdern zusammen zu sein. Äh, jetzt, äh, meine Enttäuschung ist, dass äh, seit bestimmter Zeit Krieg zwischen Ruanda und äh, das weiß ich nicht, ob es so zu schildern ist, dass dieser Krieg zwischen Ruanda und Kongo stattgefunden hat. Aber Misstrauen ist sehr, sehr groß zwischen Kongo und Ruanda, vielleicht auch Burundi. Äh, Burundi. Könnten Sie aus Ihrer Sicht uns sagen, wie können wir aus dieser schrecklichen Lage rauskommen? Danke. We have just time for one more question, if there is one. Okay. Not really a question, but a proposal. Since you yourself mentioned the diplomatic problems in talking about the Western side, maybe your institute can take that up and organize a panel <laughs> taking up it. our concerns. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. <laughs> It's uh, noted. <laughs> okay, if you don't have uh, more questions from the audience, um, would you like to begin again? Thank you. Uh, thank you, my, my brother. <laughs> um, the, the question you are asking is very complicated because wh when you start to, to think, to talk about different sovereign countries, it becomes difficult. Uh, of course, we, we know that uh, Congolese were, or are our brothers. Uh, we still have exchanges, by the way. Um, Congolese uh, working in Rwanda, uh, Rwanda living in, in Congo and, and Burundi in the region. Um, the, the problems we have, they, I think it's, it, it's very important First, you are true that uh, there is a s kind of uh, uh, mistrust now between the population. But it, it was because of, of what they, 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 uh, they went through. When you go on the border, in, 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 for example, in, in, in Goma, you will see the people going from one side to the other because they need each other. They, they work together, they do uh, businesses together and they trust each other. It means that the most important, and I think this is the way we'll come out this uh, bad situation we have now, is to strengthen the, the exchanges, to see that we have common interests. Uh, we, we, we are not winning anything, we have everything to lose if we keep those, um, um, uh, how do you call it? We keep the fighting or, or not being good to get together. Uh, there are also good programs, by the way, uh, bringing young people together, uh, also uh, supported by the German government. Uh, for example, uh, uh, organizing some uh, football tournaments so that young people know the young Congolese. When they meet Rwandan uh, football player, they say, oh, they are not so bad. Uh, and then the, the, um, the fans also, they, they can also uh, be fun for, from the other side. So I think we, we need to bring our communities again together, of course, with the political will and the political support, and I'm convinced the political will is there. There is a good number of problems. I said that until today we are uh, facing consequences from the, 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 the genocide that happened in Rwanda and brought some people uh, to, to Congo, we still have those problems, but we cannot stop talk to each other and say we'll wait until those problems are, 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 are solved. We try to solve them, but on the other hand, 
bring our people together, showing them that they are brothers and sisters, uh, that they, are, they, are, they have common interests and that we all uh, are more willing when we, we work together and when we stay together. And our wish, of course, is that uh, in some few years we'll have a very peaceful region and a very flourishing region. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Before we can con uh, continue uh, asking uh, questions on a more personal level uh, at the reception afterwards, um, I would uh, now begin with a final round of, of uh, last questions um, and asking the same question all of you. Um, if you imagine now um, the next April in 18 years, April uh, 2030, uh, and you come to, uh, to Rwanda and you will be in Rwanda at, uh, in that time having a guest, uh, guest from Germany showing, uh, showing the guest uh, one of the memorial sites in, in Rwanda. What will be the main notion um, that you will tell them in 18 years about uh, that what happened then 36 years ago? Beginning with the ambassador, then is then uh, you will have the last word, Charlotte. I just wanted to be the last one to talk. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You can open then the the, the reception after that, but you will have, have the final closing remarks. But for the last round, you will have the. <laughs> uh, Twenty thirty uh, to go around and and uh, having a guest. Um, It's very difficult to answer, but I, I hope that, um, or I'm confident uh, that we'll arrive there, that um, I'll be very proud to show a uh, very modern Rwanda, very developed Rwanda, and tell him this is a bad history, but we have overcome it completely. Our children, they just know it from the history, our grandchildren, they just hear it but they don't um, feel the consequences anymore. Sometimes, I would like to add, sometimes they even don't believe that it happened. Will tend not to believe that it happened? I don't think so. I hope the daily life will be okay, will be yeah, much better. I'm thinking mainly at the young people, linking what we said about the guilty. I think it is very important that the guilty one are being named and punished so that we can break this, uh, this um, general guilty. You, 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 you can see now in Rwanda something which is really, uh, which is a pity. In the past, because it was good to be Hutu, because you could have this and this, you, you will change your, your, your ethnic group, you will try to show, hey, not be a Tutsi at all. Now, because of the shame, the guilty, linked with, the, with being Hutu, like if all Hutu were killers, or even when it is your father or your brother who is a killer, who is a perpetrator, why the shame should be on the child? But we are seeing that now. Children are ashamed and trying even to pretend and to tell you how many people they lost in their family because it is a shame to be associated to the killers. And I really hope that with the years, this can be, can be cut. Mm. So that, the, like the boy who was talking, it was very, very emotional. Mm. Why children should be bearing the guilty of their parents? But if we don't do anything, this is what is more natural. People see you and say, like the, the children who are born from rape, there are people who are showing him, hey, he's, the, he's, a, he's, the, he's the, the child of a killer. He has the face of the killer, but he's not the killer. And he's for nothing for that. So I think there are, there are things which needed to be really yeah, broken for a, for a better future for, for, for our, uh, our children, for the, the, the new generation. And I think if I bring somebody to the memorial, especially the memorial of Gisozi, for those who have not been, it, it's really, um, it, it's good. Because it is not the local event, it is the whole history. It goes long, long, uh, far away in the, the origin, and how the whole thing evolves. 
And it comes to the international community. There is nothing, there is nothing nobody who is spared. So you see the whole, the, the whole mechanism, how, uh, how it was possible. So the memorial, it shows the memorial, there is a, a very, uh, a, a big side of education, which is very important. And it is not only uh, about Rwanda, the genocide of the Tutsi, but also the Holocaust, also the Armenian, also what happened in the other part of the world, so that people can learn. Because this is not a specificity of Rwanda. It's, it has happened here, it can happen uh, somewhere else, so how can one learn? And to keep the young people, uh, um, watch yourself, watch yourself. I always say when, uh, to the, the, the children, it starts, it starts in the school, Schulhof. What's this? Schoolyard. Schoolyard. <laughs> My German is so bad, but when I can't. <laughs> in the schoolyard, this is when things started. When? Because of one is different, one is black, or one is big, or one is uh, too, too dun, or one is too this. Those differences which makes people bullying others. This is how it starts. And the other component of the, bully, the, the one bullying is the bystanders. All the one, this big mass who are looking, but who are afraid and don't want to eh, If I say something, then the big, uh, the grand girl, the, the big talker, the, the, he's going to take me and I'm, eh, eh, so I keep quiet, it's not me, but tomorrow it will be you. So this is why I think the educational thing is so, is so important. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for this very important recommendation of that uh, memorial in, in one, which is very, very good. Charlotte, um, in uh, 2030, uh, you will come from, from a memorial service, and the, uh, the, the young child from the movie uh, has made a speech as a new president of, of, uh, of Rwanda, uh, remembering um, the genocide of 1994, and, and you, uh, you will go to a memorial site. What will be your, uh, or what do you think, or do you hope, will be uh, the main uh, impression for you at that time? Well, I, I hope that I will be able to say that the reconciliation process that started now in Rwanda was successful, and that um, edu that um, the education system has fulfilled its function, and um, that Rwanda um, overcomes the last challenges that still remain, and um, that um, and I also hope that um, until then no other genocide takes place in any other part of the world. So. I think that <laughs> would be thank my key message. And thank you for contributing. Um, now you have uh, the last word for the end. But, but before that, I would like to thank all of you. And uh, I'm, I'm um, yeah, very proud and very happy that we had this, uh, this discussion uh, tonight, especially that we had it with three women from Rwanda, not, sitting, not uh, Germans sitting here talking about, as outsiders about Rwanda, which happens uh, too often. Um, uh, but to have uh, women from Rwanda here giving the, us their views. Thank you very much, and now um, you have the final remarks. Thank you. How long? <laughs> That's in your responsibility now. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. I, would, uh, I, I want to take this opportunity. I won't be long. I think uh, the day was long enough. Uh, to thank you very much for, for coming, uh, for taking time to come uh, and, and discuss with us. Um, allow me to thank very particularly Esther, who accepted to come today, even it's a very personal, um, particular day. Uh, but she came and shared with us her experiences. Um, you saw all that the topic is, uh, is a sad topic, but there is a lot to discuss. But most of the, impo the most important is there is also a lot to learn, to learn from our history, to learn from Rwanda. Uh, the theme of this year, we have a theme every year in the, re uh, in the uh, commemoration time, is to uh, learning from our history to build a bright future. Um, the message I want that you all take with you today is that Rwanda had a bad history, uh, Rwanda went through um, a tragic um, time, but Rwanda is looking forward, Rwanda is optimistic, 
our young people are optimistic, and we all want to build a better Rwanda, a bright Rwanda, um, Rwanda where all children are the same, where all children are Rwandan and have the same changes. And starting from Rwanda, giving this good message in the region and over the world. Thank you very much. Thank you.